Cranky Geek Fall 2021 show is possible thanks to our sponsors Google, Agora, Daily, Dolby IO, Element, Intel, and Ring Central. See the links in the description for more information. You might know Intel from their chips, but they actually have a big open source project called uh, o- OWT. Um, joining us all the way from Shanghai at a late hour, we have uh, Zhen Zhen Zhu uh, on the Intel Weber C team. And we talked earlier about some of the new technologies coming to the web. Well, he's going to cover two of these, uh, Web Transport and Web Codex, actually touch on, on, on WASM a bit too. Zhen Zhen, I'll, I'll, let you, uh, I'll let you take it away. Please, please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm Chen Jin Zhu from Intel Software and the Advanced Technology Group. Uh, our team focuses on web platform, uh, including web media and the streaming technologies. Uh, the topic uh, for this session is implementing web transport and web codecs in an open source media server. Um, this is the media server we are going to add web transport support, uh, open WebRTC toolkit, which is an open source end-to-end real-time media delivery uh, toolkit based on WebRTC. Uh, besides SFU mode, which is commonly supported by WebRTC media servers, it also supports transcoding, mixing, conferencing, as well as analytics. It's designed to be a highly scalable system, and it's optimized for Intel platform. Uh, WebRTC is the first protocol supported by this open source project. We also added other protocols like RTMP, RTSP, and SIP support. Now we are going to add web transport support. Uh, WebRTC is widely used by web applications for online audio and video calls. Many conference systems and streaming systems are developed with WebRTC. WebRTC provides JavaScript APIs for web developers to capture audio and video and create P2P connections with other WebRTC clients. It's a pretty good technology, and it's supported by most browsers and operating systems. Um, but there is still something we can uh, there is still something can be improved. Uh, a conference system or a streaming system is uh, usually a client-server architecture, so we don't need components designed for P2P mode. Uh, for example, the standalone signaling module and ICE module, which are required by WebRTC. Uh, we got feedbacks from our partners that they would prefer a simple media server works similar as HTTP service, listen on a specific port, and they don't need to learn concepts like uh, STUN or turn, and they can easily configure network and firewall just like for typical web services. And we also want to integrate custom bandwidth estimation algorithms, uh, but it may need more frequently RTCP feedbacks. Uh, it's hard to implement such algorithm with WebRTC uh, because many APIs are not available in JavaScript layer, and we are not able to modify WebRTC's default implementation in browser. And uh, so uh, we started to think about web transport and web codecs. Uh, web transport provides flexible APIs for web application to communicate with servers. Uh, web transport we discussed today is web transport over HTTP3. Uh, as HTTP3 is based on Quick, it takes most advantages of Quick, such as uh, encryption and congestion control, uh, control the communication. Uh, it supports both reliable and unreliable transport. It also supports multiplexing, which allows us to send and receive multiple streams in the same connection without a head of line block blocking. Uh, however, it's only supported by Chrome, and it needs more effort than WebRTC for a streaming or a conference system, because WebRTC provides an end-to-end solution, while WebTransport only has transport-level APIs. So we need another module for encoding and decoding. And then web, trans- web codex is what we want to access built-in media encoders and decoders. So uh, we can use it for low latency streaming. Although it doesn't have all APIs provided by native SDKs or drivers, it allows configuration for bitrate, sample rate, frame rate, 
uh, resolution and more. Uh, some organizations or companies may already started to evaluate web transport and web codecs based solution, and we are glad to provide an open source implementation. Uh, this is a um, comparison uh, of web transport stream and uh, uh, datagram. Uh, web transport provides reliable stream and unreliable datagrams. Streaming, streaming with web, web transport stream is easy to implement uh, because the transport layer takes care of packet loss. So the application could send media metadata frame by frame. Uh, the sender is able to get bandwidth estimation from the transport layer as well, uh, which could be a hint for encoding rate. Sending with data datagrams could be harder to implement, uh, but the developers ha have the freedom to apply uh, redundant code and uh, also customize the algorithm and the drop all the packets. Uh, this di diagram uh, shows client-side pipeline. Uh, we use Media Capture API to get access to microphone and the camera or desktop sharing. And we use uh, Media Stream Truck Process API to get media data and send it to a web codex encoder for encoding. Uh, encoding the frame are written to a web transport stream with a header for its metadata. And the receiver side uh, is similar to the sender side. All streams created here are bidirectional streams. The arrows uh, show the direction for media flow. Uh, feedback flow uh, is in the opposite di direction. Uh, in this case, we don't have too much feedbacks because the transport is reliable, uh, but we still need a keyframe request when a new user joined the conference. Uh, the, the solution works good in a stable network. It, it could achieve about uh, 50, 50 to 100 millisecond delay in a local area network. But we don't always have an ideal network environment. And we would like to deal with weak networks. Uh, at least we wanted to have similar quality as WebRTC solutions. Uh, some thoughts to reduce latency includes drop, dropping all the packets and the porting um, uh, forward error correction, FEC, and the NAC, and other te technicals from WebRTC. Uh, it is important to drop all the packets when the transporter is, uh, it is impossible to drop all the packets when the uh, transporter is reliable. So we started to uh, try the unreliable datagram. And uh, for unreliable datagram, uh, we need a, a packetization for media frames. So, uh, WebRTC has RTP module implemented, uh, but its API are not exposed to JavaScript applications, uh, at least for now. So uh, we use WebAssembly to reuse Web, WebRTC's RTP and RTCP implementation. After making some changes and fixing some issues, we are able to compile WebRTC's RTP and RTCP module with EM script as a WebAssembly binary. Uh, besides RTP, we are also working on add, adding FEC support by reusing WebRTC's implementation. Uh, Client-side media processing, like a background blur or a noise cancellation can be added between media stream truck processor and the encoder. And at the receiver side, it can be added between decoder and the media, media stream truck generator. It's similar to WebRTC solution. Uh, this slide shows end-to-end -end, uh, media data flow. Uh, when the client uh, wants to send uh, 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 wants a reliable transport, the SDK creates a uh, the SDK creates a web transport stream for each media stream truck. So media data can be written in stream uh, frame by frame. A header is added to each frame for its length and uh, some flags. When the client wants to uh, unreliable transport, a RTP packetizer is created uh, for each truck. And at the server side, a web, web transport frame source is created for each media stream. All frames belongs to the same media stream will be sent send to the same frame source. Uh, for datagrams, um, a RTP depacketizer is created for web transport session. It dispatches the frame to the correct frame source. It also handles FEC and the NAC. Uh, frame source uh, send a frame to the next module, uh, which could be a audio or video processing module uh, if media processing is required. 
are a web WebRTC module if they are WebRTC clients connected. A receiver is similar to the sender. Clients also send control messages to server to indicate uh, which tracks belongs to, to the same media stream and other information for passing at RTP packets. Uh, the, the bottom part illustrates a uh, flow for data streams. It's uh, similar as WebRTC data channel. So uh, there is another problem uh, remain unresolved. We need an implementation of web transport. Uh, Chrome is the first browser supports web transport. So we would like to leverage Chrome's web transport implementation. Uh, however, Chrome has a lot of dependencies. So we created a quick SDK, which wraps Chrome's web transport implementation. Uh, that's OWT quick SDK. Uh, it's a shared library with very few headers and no Chromium headers is included. Uh, and its API doesn't involve uh, any uh, standard containers. So uh, when an application links to quick SDK, uh, they can be compiled with different compilers. The web transport module for conference server handles uh, media data and the links to quick SDK for web transport features. Uh, hardware acceleration is critical uh, to improve performance and reduce power consumption. Uh, we, are, uh, we, we, we have enabled hardware acceleration for many components in the WebRTC framework. For web codex, hardware acceleration encoding is enabled for H.264, a temporary SVC, and the VP9 KSVC. Zero copy pipeline between media capture and the encoder is enabled after eliminating color space conversion between these two modules. And for WebAssembly, flexible vectors are proposed for WebAssembly specification, tries to fully utilize devices' hardware capabilities. And the 256-bit SIMD instructions for the V8 backend is working in progress. Uh, there are some tasks uh, we're working on. We compiled the WebRTC RTP RTTP module as a WebAssembly binary, uh, but we continuously optimize it, plus APIs for both server-side and client part APIs. We spend a lot of time to keep it to work because the latest Chrome, uh, with, with the latest Chrome, because the web transport spec and the Chrome, Chrome's implementation changed a lot in the past years. Another list for the work, work uh, we are going to do, uh, we observe the buffer copy between JavaScript and WebAssembly and other places. We'll see if there is anything uh, we can do to reduce or eliminate buffer copies. Current bandwidth estimation and the congestion control mechanism is not fully optimized for real-time communication, and it probably can be improved in the future. We, will, we warmly welcome your feedbacks and contributions to this project. And uh, this is a um, very short video uh, for, uh, for a simple demo. The, the left side uh, is a web transport uh, um, uh, for sending uh, video to the server side. Uh, the video is captured from the fake camera. And uh, the, the right side is a video received from the server. This is a WebRTC uh, connection. So we send a video uh, with a web transport stream, reliable stream, and we receive it from uh, with a WebRTC uh, connection. That shows the functionality uh, of the work uh, we did. And it also shows the latency. Uh, but uh, um, as, the, as this demo, uh, uh, was working in a local area network. So the network actually is very stable. Um, so the latency is very low, uh, but we still need to uh, deal with uh, weak networks. And the code is available uh, on GitHub. And the last page is a, a reference for a web transport specs and web codec specs, and uh, uh, some more information about uh, uh, web transport and web codec based uh, streaming. Okay, thank you. Cranky Geeks Fall 2021 WebRC event is possible thanks to our sponsors. Intel, offering a scalable open source media server. Google and WebRC.org, supporting web real-time communications. Agora, the real-time engagement platform. Daily, build communications into any application. Dolby I.O., the API of sight and sound. Element. Use the Matrix Open Protocol to support real-time collaboration. And Ring Central, revolutionize your communications with the Ring Central APIs.